Okay, let's get into automation a little bit. Um, seems to be a confusing point for a lot of people. Um, I think it's the extra two modes which seem to throw everybody off, but let's get into this. Let's work our way through it. Um, I'll go over all five modes and then we'll get into who, uh, you know, some panning automation and then we'll get into uh, automating effects and stuff like that. But let's start off. Um, I think I'm going to start off by first of all making my volume envelope active, uh, visible, and I'm going to arm it, which means it'll read it. And I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start with write mode because I think that's probably the easiest mode to uh, get a grasp on what's going on here. So I'm going to change it to write mode, and again, I'm just going right there. Um, and let's see what write mode does. Um, this yellow line here represents our envelope. Um, you can see right now if I move the fader up and down in write mode it moves that line up and down uh, across the center here would be your zero and then coming down would be you know all the way off now we're at zero and now we're all the way up okay the fader is controlling that okay so let's say we you know, this is just a basic guitar track let's say we've got the level set right here and as we go through our mix there's certain points where we we want the guitar to be a little bit louder and then we want it to go back to its original volume so if we kind of keep in mind that the volume's at uh, 2.5 let's go ahead and see how write mode works so let's hit play here keeping in mind that we're in write mode okay now i'm going to move the fader up and then i'm going to move it back down and then i'm going to put it back right around 2.5 Okay, and you can see it's kind of bulldozing through. It's wherever this fader is at is what it's going to write to the track. Okay. Now, now let's now that we've written this using the fader. If we go ahead and hit play now, what's going to happen is it's just going to bulldoze through until we touch it wherever we leave it it's just going to keep bulldozing along okay um, I don't really like to use write mode it's it's kind of tricky to get it all set up right there's better ways of doing it but that in a nutshell is write mode now once you're done with write mode you have to switch back into read mode in order to get it to read the envelope that you've created okay so let's take a look at what happens when we switch into read mode you can see our watch the fader here and it'll follow the envelope. Okay, so that's how uh, a majority of the DAWs work. You've got your basic read and write mode, and then you'll sometimes have a touch mode, which we also have in Reaper. Um, so that's write mode, and again, once you're done with write mode and you've got the change that you want, you've got to switch to read mode. Otherwise, that thing's just going to bulldoze right through and it's going to erase all the automation you've done up to that point. So that's kind of the downside to write mode. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. If you uh, right-click on that, on a point here, we can select all the points. And we'll get into this manual editing a little bit later. Uh, that's really the way I like to do it. But we'll select all points and then we'll just delete them. I'm hitting the delete key and now we're back to ground zero again. Okay. Let's go into another mode now. What they call latch mode. And latch mode is different from write mode in that it's not going to record any of the changes we make to the fader until we touch it. And once we touch it then it turns into write mode and just starts bulldozing just like write mode does. All right, so let's take a quick look. Let's let's first make some changes with it uh, to the envelope. Then we'll rewind it, and then we'll watch how it reacts and uh, learn how to use it. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it down. You can see it's recording what I'm doing. And then when I let it go, it stays right where it's at. It turns into bulldozer mode. It turns into write mode. Okay. Now, how this is different from write mode is, is now when we play it, you'll see the fader moves up and down, and it'll follow what we've already done until we touch it. OK, 
okay? And then it turns into bulldozer right mode again, okay? Okay, so that's latch mode. You can go ahead and right click on a point again and select all points and I'll just delete them again. Let's get into touch mode, which is I think if you're gonna if you're gonna be playing with the faders, touch mode would probably be the mode that that you would use. It's the least destructive and I think the easiest to use out of all the all the ones where you're actually touching a fader. So let's take a look at touch mode. Uh, again, you're controlling, you know, we're looking up here, we're controlling the envelope with the fader. Okay, now let's see how touch mode works. Real easy here. Let's turn it down so we can get a good look at it. Okay, I hit play and we're moving along. We say, oh, I want right here, I want it turned up. And I'm done. Okay, and I hope you're hearing the, hearing the mouse clicks, but as I was going along I, I took control of the fader and I left it up for a while and then right at this point I let the mouse go and it went back to the original starting point and that's different from latch mode in that when you let go that's it you're done recording in touch mode okay as soon as you let go of this fader okay it stops recording see that and it reads what's already there and doesn't alter it. So let's say we, we goofed up on that and we wanted to do it again, okay? So we'll hit play and we'll touch the fader now and bring it back down and then let it go back to where it was. Okay, as soon as I let go of the fader it stopped writing and transitioned itself right back to the original volume that we had. So again, touch mode if you're a fader rider, I think touch mode would be the way to go. Um, just my opinion. I, th I think that's the most useful mode of the ones where you're actually touching the faders to write your automation. Okay, so let's get rid of these. And now we're going to go to keeping in mind that we have the tracks armed. Uh, we're going to go into just straight read mode which will turn your fader background green and this is probably the mode that uh, I would use the most um, initially what you do is set up your you know kinda take a visual say I was at uh, that fader was at 3.4 and that was my nice baseline mix and now I'm gonna start spicing it up by turning things up and down and uh, you know goofing with pans or whatever the way I like to do automation um, I don't know if it's because of the way I initially learned or whatever is I like to just draw it right here right in this track window it allows me to get right up on a track and, and take a look at it pick an exact spot where I want to turn it up and to edit this line uh, it's pretty easy um, I'm just right now left clicking and I'm adding a point right there and I've got my snaps turned on then if I click over here and add another point and I just kinda drag it and hold it around and let it go Okay, that's going to give me my volume up. Uh, say I just wanted that one short section to be up and then I wanted it to come back down to the original level. Um, you know, I just eyeball it down here. I think we're at 3.8 there, 3.8 there. Okay, and say I wanted a little short burst right here where I wanted it, something special happen there and I wanted that to be a little bit louder and then come back down to 3.8. Okay. Um, that's usually how I do it and now that we're in read mode it just reads that Okay, you get the nice visual feedback of the fader moving up and down you get the green background telling you that you got some automation going on and you know this is all freely editable if I just right click on it I can drag it over here I can drag that over here. Um, a lot of times, what'll happen is you'll get into the mix, and then all of a sudden you'll 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 think this low level here is is too low, but you like the high level. Um, so if you hit the shift key, 
and then uh, uh, left click on this you can move this horizontal line as a whole here okay so say I wanted it back to be at like two so I can just go through and pick these and move them up uh, to two versus if I didn't hold the shift key and I just pick this point it's gonna move angular see that it'll move in an angular direction but if you hit the shift key and then pick it it moves uh, as a whole straight up and down okay that's read mode it does nothing more than read and you manu manually draw in all your curves and points and whatever um, and then the last mode that they have is uh, called trim read and what this is um, this is actually kinda cool uh, unique um, what it's going to do is the trim part is has nothing to do with the envelope. It's basically turning your fader into a trim pot. Um, those of you that don't uh, have only used Reaper or whatever, a trim pot is basically different from the fader. It's usually a knob at the top and it allows you to control the gain uh, to the whole channel. Okay, um, And then your fader, which basically does kind of the same thing. Um, gets more power it's more of a it's more if you're using microphones into a board but by using trim it makes it seem like you're going to be editing the envelope somehow when in reality you're not uh, it's reading it and then your your fader becomes nothing more than like a master volume for the envelope okay but your fader is not going to jump up and down so let's take a look at what's what that means exactly <laughs> Okay, you, you hear the volume going up and down, but our fader isn't moving to follow it. Um, so let's say we played that again, and let's say, you know what, this whole thing is just too loud. I want to bring the whole thing down. Um, I want to move the whole envelope down using just the fader. So you can turn the volume down, but it'll still read that envelope. See, if I turn it down it's still reading the envelope but you're controlling the envelope you're controlling the envelope as a whole basically with the fader now okay kinda interesting um, uh, personally I like to know what track has got automation and I like the visual feedback of the feeders or the faders moving up and down uh, you know uh, they're giving you options here which is kinda cool uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's just leave that up and 